Welcome everybody to the Monday, May 15th meeting of the Conway Select Board. Call the meeting to order. Um, first item on the agenda, voting to approve the minutes of May 8th. Jessica, any questions? Uh, I'll second it. All in favor? Aye. 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 It's unanimous. We have no warrants. Meetings attended by select board members. Chris? None here. Didn't you just go to one today? That wasn't a meeting, though. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, Erica? Yep. Right. I, I mean, you wouldn't consider that a meeting, right? That's just a discussion? What? You, you and me? Oh, no. Yeah, okay. <laughs> just making sure. <laughs> um, we had a school committee meeting on tier that was interesting. And, uh, um, but uh, the long and the short of that is that Sunderland and Deerfield have already passed the school budget, which then led to an extended discussion of what is the actual burden of proof for the budget to be approved amongst the four towns. Is it three any three towns? Um, in which case Conway would have just as much weight as Deerfield? Or is it, since Deerfield has 49% of the student population, is it Deerfield plus one a majority or the other three towns together as a majority? So, but depending on which lawyer answers the question, depends is uh, whether or not the school budget has already been approved no matter what we do at town meeting. So, um, uh, Public comments, anybody? Seamus the talking dog? Uh, okay, new business. So we are uh, blessed tonight. Kate McDonough, Kendall, um, uh, with uh, Pollinate Conway to present their thoughts on Veterans Memorial Park preliminary design sketch. Perfect timing. taking time to hear us about this. Um, so along with, um, I'm Kate Fenna, and along with Kendall Clark and, and Cynthia Lawton Singer, I'm here to propose a plan for planting native trees and shrubs at Veteran Memorial Park across the street, which conveniently we can look out the window and see. Um, please bear with me while I refer to my notes. But I think um, most people would agree that the park needs improvements in, the, in terms of the plantings, especially since the large trees were removed. So our goals are to um, use native trees and shrubs to create a more attractive landscape and to support native pollinators and birds, um, to plant, to help uh, provide screening between the park and the neighbors to enhance privacy, and that will take time as the plants mature. Um, to remove unhealthy trees as needed with the approval of the tree warden, and um, to try to eliminate the entrenched poison ivy. Um, We've developed a, a preliminary design sketch, which I think is up on the screen, but I also have copies, paper copies. Oh, you've got copies, okay. So I've got copies if anybody yeah, wants maybe one. We can, I can't fit the whole thing in, so I'm just showing the key. Yeah, uh, oh, plants. okay. All right, I mean, yeah. Yeah, and, and essentially we wanted to present this, um, not to get into the details of what the different species are, but just to show that we're serious about this and we're invested in the project. Um, it, it allows you to see the, the footprint of the area. We, we collaborated on this, the three of us, to, to create this design. Um, and it runs along the property border, essentially, if you can tell that from the drawing. Yeah, I think it'd probably be more useful to see the drawing than the, the key, because, yeah. So, um, <clears throat> you can okay all right yeah I have a few more things but we can yeah. um, so the, the plant list it does contain species that will provide year-round interest um, and once we have your approval we'll flash out the plan with quantities um, this was just kind of a you know here work in progress um, and ultimately we would create a budget and apply for funding either through CPA or the Cultural Council or both so Really, um, there's a bit of urgency on our end because the first step is site preparation and that's time sensitive because of the poison ivy. Um, 
so a potential timeline would be as soon as we got approval right away we would like start in installing sheet mulching to cover the planting area starting with the poison ivy areas and just in case you're not familiar with that that's a, a well-known practice in the field um, with where you layer thick cardboard and organic material and a thick layer of wood chips and then you leave that but in the case of poison ivy for an extended period potentially a year um, to smother before you plant so that means we wouldn't be planting until spring of 2024 um, installing the new trees and shrubs and that would be of course pending getting some grant funding um, and that the timing would work out. Um, basically, for the best selection in terms of the plants, we have to order early, like January, maybe as late as March, but things sell out. Um, you have to do a pre-order, really. And where we're at right now is that um, we've already begun gathering materials, um, get, gathering large sheets of cardboard that Kendall's been doing, and getting donations of wood chips from neighbors. Um, from Cynthia's end of working on that. And um, we're lining up, we're, we're working on sourcing additional organic material and also lining up volunteers to help with the wood chip delivery and site preparation. And we're also considering signage to explain the whole site prep process to the public, but that's something that we don't have funds for. Um, but the rest of, you know, the rest of it's all volunteer and donated materials. Um, and then, of course, everybody wants to know about maintenance. Um, you know, we will have some volunteer involvement, especially with pruning, but we would request some town support. Um, but one of the things that we intend to do is use um, these things called tree gators. They're donut, sh the ones that we were looking at are donut shaped, which you can just put around the base of the tree and they hold water and will slowly release that. And um, fortunately, the neighbor, Brad Scudder, has agreed to let us use his outdoor faucet for watering. So um, that's, that's an important thing to you know, get clarified. Um, and presumably, we, you know, in doing this, we will be reducing the area that, that has to be um, mown and trimmed, and so um, relative to what's happening currently, so that would be a cost savings to the town. So just to kind of summarize, it's about beautification, privacy screening, pollinator support, and educating the public. So we would appreciate the select board support, um, as well as the town staff, and we're asking for your approval to move forward with this so we can begin site prep and dealing with the poison ivy. Um, and the initial work is set, both the design and site prep is being done by volunteers with donated materials and plants and other materials requiring grant funding. Um, we will be pursuing that. So that's... So when, when, can I ask just one, when you say um, the support of some town staff, can you be more specific about exactly which town staff and exactly what you want them to do? Um, you guys have any thoughts on that you want to share on that? <clears throat> well, I keep thinking, you know, we have all these trucks and we have all these things, but it's very hard to um, get help from the um, people who are in charge of the trucks and things like that. And, you know, for one of the things that we're struggling with right now is we have commitments on material for like 20 yards of, of mulched um, bark and tree. And uh, getting it delivered to the site is an issue, you know, like it's 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 a lot of material and, and getting it delivered there is um, a task, you know, finding finding people who can deliver that much material, you know, as volunteers. It's, it's That's hard. That's a big truck load. A pickup truck is one yard. Yeah, it's a big truck. It's like a dump truck. A jump dump truck. We have volunteers who do the bucket. Yeah, one and a half yards at a time. Yeah, yeah. 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 It just doesn't make sense. It, it it would just be very labor intensive and a lot of driving with the tractor and you know, um, and you know people have problems with illness and 
time and you know there's all kinds of limitations everyone has um, in order to make a commitment to to do a, a big job like that you know for you know it's, it's on a big scale for a small group of people <laughs> so you know, it would be nice to be able to use some of our publicly funded, publicly available, should be available, I, I think should be available trucks and things. But, you know, so far we haven't been able to um, engage any of that. Just, we've all been working with, you know, local people who are good hearted and generous and kind and want to help, you know. But it, it's, it's a problem. And um, yeah, so that's the main, the main thing with that. Um, I just wanted to point out that, <clears throat> just so that you, you know what you're looking at here. This is the, um, the paving, and these are the little benches. So this is the area you know, against the fence over there. Um, and that's all that it is. And <clears throat> so it's it's roughly the same area that's mowed right now, you know, but maybe a little bit a little bit less mowing um, than currently. Um, it looks like it's not being mowed right now. That the part that we're thinking about. Today. Right, right. Yeah. They're not mowing. There might be a little bit yeah. less. So do you do you have a recollection of what of during the Festival of the Hills, what portion of that Veterans Park is occupied by the various tents and I know it, like I not know in this area. Right between the ellipse and the house is where the is where the uh, the authors thing is always yeah. and blood the pressure. Yeah, the blood pressure thing and um, are you talking about the house that's not nobody's living in right now? Or no, 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 no. Right here, we but weren't planning to do much there at all. Yeah, I mean, and we would keep I, that in mind. That's a good point. Yeah, but it's kind of it's one day a year that it gets used, but it's, I know. that's that's the one day that space is at a premium. Mm -hmm. but, right. Uh, so, so that's the area down here, the closest to the house, to the twenty five meters. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Right. Right. yeah, we're we're just going to be um, using. The space that already has things planted. In, yeah, that's what I think. You know, so, you know, in that area. <clears throat> I think your plan is awesome. I think, uh, I think that the, the, you solved the big problem, which was water. That, that was, <laughs> that was going to be yeah. <clears throat> the municipal employee resistance. <laughs> um, and so I, you know, get, I understand the, the the desire to have the truck, the big trucks, do stuff, but um, the reality of that is you'd be waiting, and it, it's very unlikely to occur in the time frame that you want it to, mm -hmm. and um, mm -hmm. all that sort of thing. Uh, 20, 20, 25 yards sounds like a lot, but twenty, yeah, 20, 20 yards. Yeah, it is a lot. It is a lot. Pretty big pile. Okay, it's a good size area to cover, and we want to cover we need at least to, four inches. Yeah, we need to cover it thickly so that the poison ivy. Is, oh, is that's part. That's dead. part of the poison ivy. <coughs> yeah. Dead. Yeah. I got it. Yeah. Yeah, because we don't want to mm -hmm. use herbicides. That's and then we don't have to dig the bed. We'll just create the bed, and then it'll be ready to dig. To plant. Make the holes, put the plants in, and then. All the mulch is already in place. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's good. It makes sense. Um, I don't know. I know you can. Uh, who deli The guy from Ashfield delivers mulch when you buy it from him. Bear, bear, whatever. We're trying not, bear to, bear we're trying not to buy comp any compost. Oh, uh, yeah. And we still have a 20 foot pile <laughs> of chips. You do? From the highway department. Isn't that the highway department's chips? Oh. Uh, up at the highway department? No, 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 by the pool. Mary Hart. Oh, yeah, oh no, the, those no. are, yeah, those those are, are town. they oh. may have come from the town, I'm not sure, but right. they're they're being used. Okay, got it. Yeah. 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 
Yeah, she's one of the main contributors. Oh, she okay. was, she's giving us 10 yards, and then another person, uh, Marilyn Webster, had some tree work done, mm -hmm. and, and Mary let her put the chips there, but we're going to use yeah. okay. those chips too. So. Yeah, so they're not far away. It's yeah. just getting them there to here. Scooping them up, and, <laughs> and the other thing is, um, you know, we don't want to drive on the paving, we don't want to mess up the grass, and so we were trying to figure out if we could contact, I was trying to contact the owner of this house, Richard Barringer, Derek. 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 Um, and I have not been successful so far in getting to talk to him. I, I got an answering machine that said, hello, you've reached the Ferrick, so I know that, you know, somebody with his name, his last name, has that phone, but um, I haven't talked with anyone. Do you know the, um, the grammar school principal, Kristen Gordon? So, um, the owner of that spouse is a recently retired teacher, so the school would know how to get in touch with them cell phone wise and all that stuff. With the Ferrix? Yeah. I don't have his number, but. I doubt Laura would be. Hmm? I doubt, I yeah. doubt yeah. she would give us that information. Right? Sure. Yeah. Why not? Could try. It's a noble purpose. <clears throat> all right. Do you have any more questions about the existing trees or how this? No, the project. the rhodos the rhodos there always looked eh, and the viburnums there always looked eh. <laughs> so but, it's. But without an enormous budget, we wouldn't be getting huge specimens. We're right. not going to get into talking about the plantings right now, but is this something you could see the town having some patience with how things take a few years to look like what you wanted to? Become. Yeah, we don't I mean, have a budget to buy large plants. How do you think that would go over? Because there was talk a year ago about putting in arborvitae, arborvitae right. as, yes, that as a was, quick fix. That was the, so the suggestion of the, the highway uh, department head. But, right. Um, and that's just because they're cheap, too. They're, yeah. They're, they're in, in quick. Yeah, yeah they'll do the trick. Except the deer, I swear, would eat them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do that thing yeah. around the bottom. So it'll be a, a probably a year that the, the, that you have the cover on to, to mitigate mm -hmm. and destroy the poison ivy. Yeah. And then after that will be the planting. Planting. Okay. That's the intention, yeah. Okay. What's the long-term maintenance, if any? It would need pruning probably a couple times a year and you know, maintaining the uh, taking care of invasive things like we cleared a whole lot of bittersweet off of the there's some um, holly native holly plants there, um, and they were just covered with bittersweet. So there's bittersweet roots in the soil too, in addition to poison ivy. Um, so I'm sure that the birds will deposit more seeds and gift us with more bittersweet. I think there's also garlic mustard over there. Yeah, yeah, there, you know, there's invasive species that will have to be controlled. Um, but just general weeding. And, yeah. and the first and year, you know, regular watering just to yeah. get things established. Are you yeah. asking who would take care yes. of that? <laughs> yeah. Yes, thank you. Yeah. So we're not asking the highway department to do that. No, right? No. Um, so no. it would be similar to the project on the library island where we came into this, came here a year ago and Janet sat here and asked if, if we can't handle it ourselves, could, I think it was $700 come out per season out of the open space budget and that was approved. But we haven't figured out how. I, we, we, we just, we think we can. Well, it's it's going to be a lot of watering, so it would be great to have somebody who whose job it was to do this. Right, and that in that be first season, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. We would we would ask for funds through grants, but I don't know if that is typically something they allow for. Well, when the <coughs> space committee put in all those trees at the meadow, right. and then they had a young guy is, in town, it's a grant funded yeah. water, water, yeah, and he, right, something like and that. During a drought, he did it. 
Yeah. He's still doing it. He's still doing it? Oh, yeah. 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 They figured out how to pump it out of the river. Yeah. It's pretty impressive. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Theoretically, the river access isn't that far from that either. Theoretically. So, theoretically also, it, it, the trees and shrubs should, I mean, obviously they need the attention that first year getting established in any, during any drought periods, but they should be a little less um, time consuming than, uh, you know, perennials and wildflowers are. Yeah, definitely. <clears throat> the longer fall. Yeah. And especially with all the organic matter that we're going to put down, which will absorb moisture and keep it in, and you know, so it will have resiliency, um, more resiliency to drought than if we didn't put that down. I, mean, I think it's a great idea. You know, the, what you may not have realized is that that library commons was the trial run for your group. <laughs> and, uh, you know, because you, you asked, is, it, uh, is the town, is it going to, will everybody accept the long process? <coughs> the answer is, of course not. Like, <laughs> like, there's no such thing as unanimity in communities anymore. Like, you know, even the trial run at the library commons, I remember getting two very negative comments about. But one of them has since approached me and said, I was really wrong about that. That looks great. So, I mean, you just you win people over with your good works. And, um, but for sure, there'll be a complainer, too, because some people aren't happy unless they do that. It's just the way it goes. But, but that's okay. Don't let that stop you. And, I mean, I, I think it's <coughs> re replacing these, the, these commercial commercial plants with native plants is a really good thing. What will happen with the ones that are there that you're taking out? Bonfire, town commons. Which ones are we going to take out? How will we deal with the, the actual tree that when it comes out? Or Right, I'm just, the reason I'm asking is because I remember when things happened with the town offices and people were like, well, if I had known that, I would have taken it. I would have just dug it up for you and taken it to my yard. Oh. So if there are things there that, I don't, and I don't know what the process would be, but I hate to. That aren't invasive. <laughs> that aren't invasive, thank you, yeah, yeah. Well, I think we're talking about, there's one tree that's dead, and then um, the yes. mulberry tree we wanna, yeah, we wanna keep the mulberry. The um, cedars that are looking pretty sad. Yeah. I'm not sure somebody would want them. But, uh, also, they're so large. I don't know that you can dig them up and have They've them survive. They've been there so long. Yeah, yeah I, maybe they would survive. But they're not in beautiful. They're not beautiful, healthy plants mm -hmm. that somebody would just love to get their hands on. Yeah. You know, there somebody would have to be like, I love plants and I really like nurturing them. You know. <laughs> I should say that some of the plants that are there, um, you know, we're not planning on just like starting from scratch and getting rid of no. everything. There's some really nice plants there, witch hazel, and, and they're on that holly, and yeah. There and are, so there's a big oak tree. I mean, we're not going to get rid of the oak tree. We're not going to get rid of the pine tree. So would it make any sense, or would it be a silly idea to do something like with the tree here, and you need to put a notice on the tree that this is coming down, to put a notice on the plant that. This is going to be. No. no. Just curious if somebody no. would want them. But if, if, if we do that for a tree hearing, then that sort of public announcement if somebody really wanted them, they could. I didn't mean doing a tree hearing. I just meant the posting, you know, like on the plant or some, some way to let people know that if somebody's interested, it might be more trouble than it's worth. I just free. Yeah, I mean, that's, right. that basically, yeah. <laughs> if you want this, it's yours. Well, yeah. plus, if you're going to be it out. digging things up with the poison ivy. Yeah, um, yeah. Not so, not dig at so your attractive. Yeah. <laughs> but we do plan to meet with Walter and go through what's there, you know, before anything gets taken down. As a group, you've proved your worth to the town already. So I say, go for it. But what do I know? So, do we have to officially make a motion? So start, even though we don't have this, the grant money to 
finish the project. You see, I mean, I'm not trying to shoot myself in the foot, but that's the reality of it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, and the, so the reality yeah. that might be is that it just instead of one year or two years, it might take longer than that. That's all. I mean, it's just that. Or worst so case scenario. I just want to be really transparent about it. It's, it's the best way to go yeah. is to, to be careful and take and do it as a process. Unfortunately, it's a little bit backwards, but that'll save time in the long run. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> yeah, and I think the area that that we're that our plan in, includes, you know is the area that needs screening and privacy between the park and the neighbors. And, um, you know, regardless, I mean, if, if we, for some reason, couldn't complete <coughs> it, you'd have the groundwork set mm -hmm. to plan something else. Right. You know, so it's... Basically, okay. you would have, you know, an area with mulch, so... Yeah, you'd have an area that's ready to put in. <coughs> it doesn't have a bunch of poison. Yeah. Getting that much mulch back there should be interesting. Yeah, wish yeah. us wish us luck. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if you know of anybody with a tractor who doesn't mind yeah, with, a, <laughs> with, a, with a big bucket. <coughs> Bless you. A big bucket. Uh, the biggest like really for big home? Bucket. Yeah. That like A bunch of tractors in town, but they all have one yard buckets, not 10 yard buckets. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, no, you wouldn't, yeah, you wouldn't carry 10 yards in a bucket. I mean, you'd need a, <laughs> you'd you need need a, a huge you weight on the back yeah. to yeah. carry a load like that <clears throat> without tipping over. Should we go so you can get on with your, are we? Sure, we, this is the most fun part of the meeting with Karen. Oh, <laughs> we can talk about <laughs> what about the rest of the rest of other issues out there. <laughs> but did you want to? Do we need to make a motion? Is it, or, I mean, yeah, I mean, it wasn't on the agenda as a vote, but, but yeah. um, you know, to give them permission to get going. Um, yeah, I'm in favor. I move to give Pollinate Conway permission to get going with regard to their preliminary design sketch for Veterans Memorial Park okay. native planting. Second that motion. All in favor? Aye. Thanks. Aye. Thank you. Go get Thank you. Thanks. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. No, I have it again. <laughs> And I was just over there yesterday, so I know I'll probably get it again. Uh, <laughs> or worse. Do you have eye people? I do. You do? Okay. Yeah. All right. I guess it's not working. No. Um, yeah, I'm just too susceptible. <laughs> um, Review of information from tree board here. Is there anything that we need to talk to? Anybody have anything that they want to talk about? Yeah. Chris has something. Oh, oh yes. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, it's going to be a broader, much larger discussion at some point. But, you know, none of us really know how to move forward because there's no policy in place. And the question's always going to come up, who pays for it? Um, so, you know, I, I kind of felt it was a little backwards in this sense where the owner of the proper, or the owner of the tree, of the property that the trees are on, came here to discuss it. Understanding why she did, because nobody really knows what, but it should really be the opposite of that. Or that's what, what I feel that the bylaws in other towns are, is that if you see a tree that is hazardous to the community, then you notify the public, the owner, that this tree needs to come down. If they don't take it down, then the town takes it down. Not that the owner comes to the town and says this tree needs to come take it, take it down for right. me. And then that relieves them of the burden of paying for it. <laughs> so I just wanted to put that out there. And I, I did write up um, a draft of a, a shade tree bylaw um, that I gave Barony to send to council. And we can send it to Walter. Um, and there are notes in there about, you know, pay, who pays for it, who determines who pays for it, 
cost of permits, everything like that. So I could read through a couple of those things, but I we're so in so <laughs> far into the preliminary point of just discussions. I don't think it's even worth it. Yeah, but I just the attorney yeah. read it first. But that's all I wanted to bring up is I don't want it to be a precedent that somebody has a tree that they want taken down so they come to us mm -hmm. and ask that the town takes it down. Well, that's my plan for my big tree. <laughs> <laughs> so much for my plan. <laughs> well, we don't have to buy a lot of books yet. So. Well, that's true. And I am going to contact Eversource again and get the exact number that you need to call instead of calling one number to get to another number yeah. and another number. I'll find out what it is again so we can maybe post that number. Um, on the tree warden page. On the tree warden page. And if you're near power lines, that's the first number you should call. That's all. Okay. Town administrator request. <laughs> Repair cafe. So I, I did send a little blurb earlier just to kind of get you guys the idea of what a repair cafe is. But the idea is, and I, I knew about this because of all my days in dealing with recycling and reuse. Um, so people were able to, and I attended ones that they had in Northampton before the pandemic, um, people will bring in their broken toasters or you know, some clothing that's ripped and needs repairing or any, anything like that, a bike that needs fixing. And you have this huge, you know, a room where different volunteers who have different skills are sitting at different tables and people come in with their item and bring it in and whoever is there is the volunteer. You know, you can do it a couple ways. Either the volunteer just fixes it while the person watches or the volunteer, if they feel like it, can kind of talk you through it and show you how it works and how they're fixing it. Um, I just absolutely love the idea, and I think in Conway we have so many people that, you know, retired but have so much talent, and I just think it would be a really fun social way to get people together, mix the generations. I was thinking about it for Mass Emotion as maybe one of the, you know, things that we do to try to bring about more community. So I just wanted to put the idea in your head and let you think about it. Um, I have had extension, extensive conversations with Susan Waite, who is the solid waste. Um, she's the MAC, the position I had before. And so she has her finger on the pulse of everything. And she's the one who used to run it at the Votech School in Northampton when they did it. So you know, she could tell me all about the liability issues and, and things like, you know, OK, when, if you set it, say we were to set up in the general purpose room, you have industrial outlets and then you have those industrial rubber mats that go over it so there's no trip hazard. I mean, they learned a bunch of things from having done them. Um, you know, and there are liability waivers that people sign, that kind of thing. But I just thought it would be kind of a fun idea to explore in town and see if anyone was interested in trying it. Yeah, I think it's a cool idea. Just give it a few trial runs and see if anybody shows up. Well, you have to start with recruiting the volunteers. Yeah. You gotta find people who know how to fix things first. Yeah. <laughs> Look somewhere beside me. <laughs> I'm good at fixing things just so that the next person that uses it will think they themselves broke it. <laughs> <laughs> That's a special that is a special skill. That is, that is it. Well, so if it's all right with you, then I'll start exploring and seeing if people are interested in volunteering yeah. to do that. Because without the volunteers, we don't go anywhere. But. All right, great, thank you. Um, oh, this is Adam's suggestion. Yeah. Timing of the annual report. Oh, yeah, we, uh, Veronique and I were looking at, you know, the annual report comes out basically a year after the information is even relevant. You know, because, you know, putting this together, and of course, you know, I've read it probably 15 times, and I think to myself, who would even want to read that? It's so old. By the time people right. get it, it's so old. And I've looked around, and there doesn't seem to be any reason why it comes out that late, other than, well, it always has. I mean, I, I can't find anything that's, you know, substantial. We were just discussing, you know, wouldn't it be better if <clears throat> people got it like at Thanksgiving? I mean, we could get it out as early as, you know, once the, so the fiscal year ends. Yeah. People come back September 1st, submit their articles, and 
that could be distributed, you know, then or the, at least you know the end of January or just sometime closer to the end, of the, to the, the end of the year instead yeah. of you're already looking at voting on next year and you're just getting a report from a year, you know, mm -hmm. like two years yeah. old. So we were just kind of floating that around the other day in the office for feedback. And since Adam got me thinking about it, the other thing that has occurred to me, looking at our bylaws, since we just did this on Friday, we are required to mail a copy to every head of household. Mm -hmm. And um, I think it might be wise at some point for us to say that's a lot of money. We could print up that many copies and have them That was available. an article at town meeting like five or six years ago. Oh, was it? And it was like unanimously defeated. Uh, is that interesting? Well, it's on the website. Well, it's on the website. I mean, you could, yeah. It hasn't even. Well, yeah, just no, it, was, it was then too. Read it, all, right? it was then too. Really? That, yes. That, interesting. And I remember predicting that it would go down to defeat. Because huh. right. those are it's that's that's like a tradition, and and and, and it's in the Norman Rockwell painting. You hold the annual report, fold it up as you shake it in anger. Right, but you can pick it up at the town hall, and, and nobody has to spend that much money mailing it to you. Yeah, no, but they, we put all the prices out there. This is an extra really? whatever thousand dollars, oh, okay. and people are like, "Yeah, we want that." Right. Like, maybe, but yeah. maybe in a year like this. That's year, also they, yeah. Like, that's also two hundred fifty people <laughs> that go to that. Those are probably the two hundred fifty people that actually read it. Yeah, that's. But we want to we want to expand. In December. Yeah, we want to expand that sort. But, um, I'm, I'm open to the idea of changing the timing for sure. Because, I mean, it's you're going to be preparing it, so. I mean, yeah, I, d I couldn't think of any reason why yeah. it waited that long to be done, except that it has to be mailed out. So if it has to be mailed out, that's why you do it with the warrant, right? Yeah. Because so, it's one mailing instead of two. Yes. Right. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Yeah. That's a big no. That's yeah. hundreds of dollars. That's, that matters. Yeah. Right. Right. It does. But and it affects you know like uh, Lori's report with because hers doesn't go fiscal year. It goes right because people like to look at who got married, who died. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that would have to be adjusted. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's. You can change that to a fiscal year, though. It's just yes. one switch. I mean, Board of Health did that this year for this annual yeah. report. And, you know, come to think of it, there's no reason why we couldn't get it done earlier and have it on the website and just not mail it out until, right? I mean, it could be available on the website. Oh, yeah. So it could just be do it early. ready for it Thanksgiving. Yeah, it'd be ready six still, months ahead of time. And we have to wait until later. Yeah, now we need true. to mail it. Yeah, oh, well. <laughs> No. Oh, yeah. Because we're so eager to start this process again because it just got finished. <laughs> <laughs> it got a little, you know, that's when I got, I got sick in the middle of it and then I lost the first draft. <laughs> it's been a, it's you been a, fun. it's been a story. But it's done. Inside. All right. But it's it's a, an inside <laughs> baseball yeah, conversation. Yeah. So it's, it's, so it's, okay, it's okay if we just begin it early. And I see, I don't yeah. see why not if you have all right. I mean, and then we can post it early and people who are really interested can see it on the website. Mm -hmm. And maybe once people realize that it's available early, then they're, they won't be clamoring to have it. Mailed. Well, and if we have a special town meeting, it'll be, we could mail it mm -hmm. with a special town meeting. That's what we're supposed to do. No, that's for annual town meeting. Uh, we've been mailing the special town meeting too. We did it last year, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. we, we did. Yeah, we mailed it. I'm just saying, yeah. So I'm just saying that, you know, if this if there's a year without a special town meeting in December, then we would wait. Anyway. Yeah. But thank you. Great. We'll get started right away. <laughs> right. Mass dot right. bicycle safe passing signs offer. Free signs. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. Um, well, I the, the first thing I thought is sign says you got to you, you sign says you got to uh, uh, pass got a four feet clearance to pass. 
But the other thing is most of the roads that you've been that you would be passing on are actually no passing roads. So I like in, in most of the most of the possible locations, we would be telling people to comply with the law and not comply with the law at the same time. So like you're talking about most of 116 where you can't pass. Right, and even uh, like most of Waitley Road, you can't pass, and most mm -hmm. of. But you can pass a bicycle. No, you can't. A bicycle is entitled to the full lane of travel in Massachusetts. Huh. They are a vehicle, and if you pass them, you are supposed to go into the next lane of travel. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah. in most situations, it's actually illegal to go into the next lane of travel. Okay. Most of Shelvin Falls Road. Is you can't pass on most of Waitley Road you can't pass on but um, maybe somewhere in there there's a couple of spots that you can pass on and you can put the sign in but or change the rules change our rules to make it passing anywhere you want whenever you want or eliminate all traffic laws like New Jersey used to do. They had no traffic laws, just a duty to use due care and circumspection. <laughs> so that just meant everything is a race between you and whoever else you're approaching. Um, yeah, this line is only reminder to drivers so are we being asked to do this, or is this a... No, they're, they're offering. Yeah, they're offering they're signs. They're free signs. Signs, signs everywhere. <laughs> signs. Ah. I know. So I mean, you want to say yes to get a couple, and that way, if we ever have a need, a desire, some somebody yeah. might. Yeah, I mean, just because we have them doesn't mean we have to put them up, right? Because that would be something. Well, so there's an MOA, so I don't, I don't know. Oh, so then. Yeah, <laughs> no, you're not. We're not required to put them up. I, I read that. We can just order them in the highway garage. Yeah, I mean, that's fine, as long as we're not being forced to hang them. Yeah. But yeah, I. I'm with you, Phil. I don't know many areas that you can even pass. Well, it does say the following locations should be considered areas of roads that have limited shoulder or bike lane width where a motor vehicle may have to cross the yellow center lines to safely pass a bicycle. So I get what you're saying. You're saying that yeah, that's, that's a, you're, you're giving contradictory information. Right. Put the sign up there, but you're not supposed to be passing anyone on that road anyway. So I, I don't, yeah, I mean, I'd be fine with getting the signs so we have them, but. As long as we're not obligated to. I've never seen anybody not pass a bicycle. Yeah. <laughs> right. That's why I was confused because no, I there, um, no clue that in, that was. In Hadley, there was a case that made it to the state Supreme Court. A, the, a bicyclist sued the police department because um, he was using the entire lane of traffic on Route 9, like, and, and it, where, where it's one lane and everybody, and the police kept on pulling him over. Well, and, and is he, he going at least 35 miles? I mean, isn't there like a no, minimum? No, there wasn't a minimum at that time. And he was just in the, and nobody could pass him without going over with a double yellow. So they, the, and eventually the police pulled him over instead of all the drivers that were crossing the double yellow. And he took it all the way, and uh, the town lost. So it does anyway. say a couple things in here. To participate in the program, municipality agreed to install and maintain take a photo once installed and send a mass dot. Okay, <laughs> yeah, well that's, I, I, I'd be amazed if they'd give the signs without, that, especially with an MOA that we couldn't. Yeah, if we cannot complete within 90 days, yeah. that's we shall promptly at our expense return the uninstalled signs. Okay, never mind, we don't want them. Yeah. That's yeah. me under and pay for the postage too, forget it. Yeah, no thank you. Yeah. Return yeah. policy is that. Thanks. So I, I take it that's a no? That's a no. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, well. Um, vote to sign the contract with Dennis Burke for diesel fuel. That is a lot of money for diesel fuel. But, um, did you see that? It was. That just needs your signature, right? Yeah. So, is there, I saw there were two different types of commitment options. 
It's on the last page also. There's a futures program pricing and then the low spot pricing. And I'm trying to find the futures program, how long that is intended for. But it also had said something about the storage of that diesel in the futures program. I want to see something about changes in location and tanks, number 12. Okay. It's very confusing because it's also saying heating oil. <laughs> Well, that's because diesel and heating oil are the same thing. Yeah? Yes. Huh. Except for the dye that they add. But, um, but that is a hidden secret. When heating that's oil goes up super high, yeah. diesel is the exact same. Sometimes diesel is cheaper. Just Learn something new every day. Yeah. Traditionally, we always just have signed this, and the, 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 there's all this custom and practice to these sorts of things. And, um, Do we have to choose one of these options? No, no that it's uh, yeah, it's based on your storage ability and oh, okay, um, so, your okay, usage and the time and the time of the year that you're getting it. Okay, so it's else. basically we're, yeah. we have the, to sign this. The school has the same kind of similar contract. And, Basically, I mean, the price is already worked out. So, you know, I'd love to just lower the price, but the question is, it would not be favorably received. <coughs> like most of anything else, uh, as a vendor to the government, you get a built-in profit. So, do we? Is it only you signing it, or yeah? Do we want to vote for? Yeah, we have to have Phil sign their contract. Yeah. Second. Oh, I don't know. What's in your hand? That's red. Oh, here you go. Oh, yeah. thanks. Thank you, thank you. All in favor? All in favor? <laughs> aye, aye. Thank After you. That's <laughs> Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Items not anticipated, 48 hours. That's fine, though. Uh, yeah, I was thinking Adam's red pen. Um, uh, town administrator update. So I read that. I haven't, so I answered to the mystery of why the grammar school plans were in. Oh, do you? Were, were in Sunderland and retrieved by Waitley. Okay. Because. Those, the th Sunderland, Waitley, and Crown Grammar School all built their school within a year or two of each other. Okay. We all used the same roofing contractor. Oh. Oh. We all should have filed a lawsuit against that same roofing contractor. Mm -hmm. Sunderland and Waitley did. Oh. Sunderland and Waitley settled for hundreds of thousands of dollars and a new roof. Oh. We, on the other hand, um, find at, our no, at, at the time, <laughs> at, at, at the time, our town lawyer was also on was also the chair of the town select board, and um, and the the belief at that time was uh, it'd be better to settle up front early, so we chose to settle for eighty thousand dollars option um, before we realized that the entire roof needed to be replaced. And which we did not that long ago at a cost of many hundreds of thousands of dollars. We made, the wrong, we made the wrong choice. Um, but that is why those plans mm. all circulated around because we were all, at one point. The um, bid specs for the. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Interesting. So, well, I have five copies of it. Uh, uh, it's interesting. <laughs> Select board comments, concerns, anybody? 
mail. Another another complaint about speeders on Emerson Hollow Road. Speeders and dust. Dust and dogs. Dust and dogs. Yeah. I did speak with the chief, and he said he has not heard directly from them. So. Um, the one thing that is within the select board's purview is to change the speed limit on town roads. I was surprised that it's and that it's even. I mean, when there's no when kind of there's no posted limit, then that you go to the state default in state law, which I guess some would, but there's. Um, I'd like to know whether what the chief and what the highway department thinks about lowering the speed limit on that road to 25. But, yeah, what did he say the speed limit was? 40. That's 40. crazy. Yeah. I mean, even 25. Two cars on can't pass each other yeah, that road no. mostly. But even 25 on that road is yeah, is, a lot. is a lot. Well, I mean, what's the what's Cemetery Hill Road? What's the well? That's paved. It's different. Yeah, Emerson different. Hollow is unpaved. Yeah. No one really speeds down that road because right. it's a giant steep hill. Yeah. <laughs> and there's some a little more gradual. Yeah, that's crazy. Could you change the speed limit on the dump road too? Because the traffic is fast and heavy on this road on the weekends. And it's very narrow. Also See, not a good place to pass. Yeah, yeah. also not a good place to pass, but also a, a good uh, a, a good argument for not paving as much roads as we do every year. Because every time we pave a road, the speeding complaints start soon thereafter. Um, just an observation. Nothing against you, Seamus. Um, Seamus didn't pave the road. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, but we could look at, we, I mean, that probably makes sense to do that. Sure, there. yep. It does. Thank you. Um, announcements, we have the 22nd is next, uh, next Monday is the pre-town meeting, but before that is the 6, 6 p.m. select board meeting at the grammar school. I guess we'll have our meeting in the library instead of the cafeteria so that they can move chairs and set up tables for the cat whatever for that. But um, and then there is a public forum, the public buildings forum at, in the firehouse auxiliary building. No, in the, the firehouse. In the, in the firehouse. The actual firehouse. At six thirty on the twenty fifth. Um, tomorrow night at seven thirty is a just is a presentation at the Historical Society that, uh, of a guy that does all the research on graves, uh, gravestones in old cemeteries and he's done a lot of research and kind of, but he can look at a cemetery at a stone and tell you who carved it from like there's mm -hmm. th and there's only like six or eight carvers and but um, but and I'm not gonna be able to make it I have a meeting to go to but <laughs> my favorite my favorite stone in that uh, Howland Cemetery is uh, a a stone from a guy named Cole, and it said, um, "It says, 40 years a slave died a free man." I just thought, I think that's wow. the coolest thing, and he's he's got a whole lot of, to talk about that. So, when is that? Book? That's tomorrow at 7:30. Um, and with that, motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. We stand to drink pretty good at five or seven.